Now, what I'd like to encourage you all to do is at some point, if you have the energy now, go for it or maybe do it a little bit later, I want you to think about your experience doing this practice. So how was the timing in the different sections? What concepts did you did you see that you're like, oh my gosh, I know this, but you couldn't remember, right? What were those things that you saw where you had that reaction? Where did you end up guessing? Where did you feel confused? What were math equations that stuck out to you that you need to remember, right? Did you see a question about circumference of a circle and not remember the formula? Don't let those things slip away. When you recognize those issues or those gaps, you have to address them immediately. Also consider your approach to bubbling. Did you bubble one at a time? So you answered question two, bubbled number two. Answered question three, bubbled number three. Or did you bubble after each page? So maybe you answered questions one through six and then bubbled one through six. Then you answered seven through 20, bubbled seven through 20. Like, did you kind of chunk it up? Did you do it after each question? Did you just wait until the end? Think about that strategy. Think about that approach. Did it work for you? Right? Think about all of these different things because they do make a difference in your score. Now keep in mind that yes, you're totally exhausted right now because you just finished this full test. However, your opportunity to maximize this time that you've put in is pretty much with the hours that you are going to now spend, not now, but maybe this coming week or in the next few weeks, to go back through every single question you missed previously and you have to make sure that you understand for every single question, what was it asking, how do you solve it correctly, and why did you miss it? So what we want you to do is leverage Winward Academy's platform. You can create a free trial to score this diagnostic. Review every single question, all those explanations, right? That is where you're really going to get the most benefit from this experience. So how do you score your exam? So what I'm going to take you through right now are the steps that you're going to take to create your free trial so that you can log in, you can score this test, you can analyze it, and you can review it. So the first thing I want you to do is go to winwardacademy.com. When you get to our website, right here you are at our website, I want you to click on the free 14-day trial button. Now I'm going to go through this a little bit more quickly, so if you find that you need to pause at certain points so that you can follow along, obviously please feel free to do that. Now when you click on the free 14 day trial, it's gonna take you to a sign up page in which you'll fill out your information. Uh, keep in mind that for the email that you provide, make sure that you provide an email that receives emails. I know that that sounds silly, but there are a lot of schools that give students email addresses, but they're just used to log into Chromebooks. They're not actually used to receive email. So please make sure that you use an email account that you actually receive emails for because you're gonna to need to check your email and verify your account, and we wanna make sure that the email doesn't get blocked by your school server. So maybe use a Gmail or an iCloud or a Yahoo or an email address like that if you're worried that maybe your school one won't work. For any of you who are under the age of 18, you can also please fill out the parent information and then go ahead and click to create your account. Now when you create your account, you're going to see this page prompting you to make sure that you've received the verification email. So what we want you to do at this point is open a new tab in your browser, log into your email, and check your email because that's how you'll be able to verify your Winward Academy account. So you'll see an email from us, hopefully it's at the top of your inbox. Be sure to check your spam or your junk folder just in case it went there. Click to open that verification email. And then what you'll want to do is inside that email, you'll see this button that says verify email address. Click on that button, or if maybe that image of the button is blocked in your browser, just go ahead and click the link underneath or copy and paste that link into your browser. What's going to happen is it will verify your account and it will prompt you that you are now ready to log in. Um, Any time in the future that you want to log in, clearly you would go to winwardacademy.com, click on login. It will then bring you to this same login page that you see here on the right in which you log in by providing your email and password. For the first time that you log in, you have to go through some of those extra steps to verify your account. But in the future, you'll just go to winwardacademy.com, click on login, and then you'll be able to log in. 
Now when you first log in, you'll have this kind of welcome message, just um, welcoming you to our learning family, so you can go ahead and click through those pop-ups. Now I'm logged in here as a free trial, and what I'm going to show you is how to navigate to the practice test that you just took so that you can score it, and you can analyze it, and you can review it. So what I want you to do is click on the practice test on the left hand side. You'll see that we have other uh, curriculum and features that we provide in terms of lessons and practice tests and um, kind of question banks. But I want you to go to this last option of practice tests. Now given that you all just took the ACT diagnostic, you're going to go ahead and click to take the diagnostic. Now we designed the platform so that students can self proctor this experience. Clearly, we just went through it together, so you've already finished organizing your pencils and your exam and your graphing calculator, etc. But if in the future you used our platform to self-proctor, when you go through these steps, it's going to show you what you need, and it's going to show you how to time yourself for each section. So um, because you've already done this right with us here in this proctored session, just go ahead and scroll to the bottom of the page you see here where it says that you're ready to enter your answers. And then it will take you to a page in which you get to enter your answers. So what I'm showing you here, I've already entered, right? But when you open this, all of those bubbles are going to be empty. So the thought is that you'll look at your Scantron that you bubbled as you went. If for the first one you put A, for the second one you put G, the third one you put A, you will just click the bubbles on the platform and it will automatically score it for you. So after you've entered all your answers for English, you'll just click the tab for math or click the tab for reading or click the tab for science and that's where you'll be able to enter your answers. You'll be able to see how many questions you got right and you'll be able to see your score. Now the most amazing part of this whole experience for you is that yes, you're going to have your score, but that's not the most important information. The most important information is that you can review and learn from your mistakes. So you have to set aside time, carve out an hour for your English corrections, an hour for your math corrections, an hour for reading, an hour for science. Set aside this dedicated time to go in and do these explanations where for every single question you miss, you watch the full explanation, you understand why the right answer is right and why the incorrect answer was incorrect. Keep in mind too that for every single question, you want to make sure you understand what was it asking, how do I solve it correctly? And why did I miss this question? You have to force yourself to do that last step, that reflection, so that you really think about why you missed it. Then what is super cool is after I reviewed this question number seven, I went through the explanation, I understand, I learned something new. I want you all to click on this hint button and it will load the opportunity for you to write yourself a hint based on what you learned in that question. And for every single question you miss, or maybe you even get one right, but it was a lucky guess, you can still add a hint. Our platform is designed that for all the hints that you write to yourself, whether you're doing lessons or whether you're doing practice tests, when you go to your mistake bank and you generate your personalized study guide, you can view all of the hints that you've written to yourself broken down by lesson and topic. And then this last section is for practice tests where you'll be able to see all of the hints that you write to yourself from these practice tests. So if I miss 20 questions in English and I write myself 20 sets of notes, when I generate my personalized study guide and I look at all my hints for the practice test, I'll be able to see those 20 hints written down for the English section. So it just keeps you super organized and all of your mistakes are together. So it's really, really powerful for your learning. Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is how you review your test. Now most students actually prefer to sort their mistakes by lesson. So usually about a third of students will go through them in order, like what did I miss for number 7 and then number 10 and then number 11, right? They review their mistakes in chronological order. The vast majority of students, however, will sort by lesson or they'll sort by topic and then they review the explanations by chunking the similar questions together. So they do all their corrections notes for the basics but essentials questions. All their corrections notes for the pronouns questions. So a lot of students really like that because they can review the information together and the questions are similar to each other which can help facilitate their learning. 
Now the other thing that you can do is click on analysis. So when you click on that purple analysis button, it's going to give you this full breakdown for every section, English, math, reading, science. You can see how many questions you got right, how many you missed, how many were blank. Again, if this was your first practice test, it's okay if you left things blank to kind of indicate this is where you ran out of time or this is something you didn't know. If, however, you were in that last moment of getting really close to the real exam, Remember, you should never leave anything blank. You always want to make sure that you answer every question, even if you have to guess at the end. Now, what I want to show you that's really special, again, to help you figure out what did I miss and then how do I use that information to create a study plan. Sort by accuracy and look at the lessons in which you have lower accuracy and you want to play, pay excuse me, particular attention to lessons that are tested more frequently. If I go in and I put little stars next to those lessons, again, these are the ones that I'm basically telling myself, Jennifer, these are extra important. You missed a lot of these. You have a lot of room for growth in these categories. Pay extra close attention, right? That's what I'm telling myself by clicking on that priority star. So now when I go back to review, you'll notice that those priority stars appear next to any question that I've starred. So what that means is when I'm doing my explanation for number seven, I get that visual cue of the star and I think, wow, I really need to pay extra close attention to this one. So again, the idea of the stars is that it's just a great visual aid to prime your focus, to prime your attention, to make sure that you're really engaged. The other thing too that a lot of students leverage on our platform is they use this information from their diagnostics to help them figure out what lessons to do. So if I've starred those three English lessons from my diagnostic, and then over on the left-hand side in the navigation, I click on lessons, you'll notice that those priority stars are now appearing for the lessons. So again, it helps you connect how did I do in a practice test and what does that mean I need to study in terms of the lessons that I need to do to review content, to review material, to boost my knowledge in these specific topics that are tested frequently. Now, because this demo is um, provided through a free trial account, that's why some of the lessons are grayed out because during our free trial, we just give limited access to practice tests and lessons. Um, if at any time you're really enjoying using the platform and you want to unlock curriculum by upgrading your membership, you can click on any of the gray buttons or you can click up at the top where it says to unlock curriculum. Now back on the practice test, the last thing that I want to show you is how you can understand your score and then kind of compare between ACT and SAT. So back on the practice test for this ACT dashboard, I can see how I did on the diagnostic. I can see my individual scores for English, math, reading, and science. And that 24 that's in the upper corner that's in that kind of greenish to blue gradient, that is my composite score. So ACT calculates a composite by adding those four sections together, English plus math plus reading plus science, and dividing by four, right? So basically just taking the average of the four sections, and that is what's called your composite score. So your composite score will be associated with a, a percentile, right, relative to how other people who have taken the exam have performed. And if you're ever curious to compare between ACT and SAT, um, you can also, or excuse me, you can also just view for your specific score that you earned, like the 24 on the ACT is equivalent to what on the SAT, or you can click to view the full conversion if you ever want to see the full table that does this breakdown. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that concludes our presentation of the practice ACT. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. You can also um, reach out to us on social media if you feel more comfortable direct messaging us there. But again, if you have any questions about your practice test, about creating your free trial, about scoring your exam, anything like that, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. And we are more than happy to support you with your learning journey. Thanks again for joining us.